Hi, my name is Kirsty and I am the Fiddle Tutor for the Adult Education Programme. I teach the fiddle class on a Tuesday evening normally when we're all allowed out um, at Tynecastle High School from 7 till 9. So I thought it'd be really, really nice um, while we're all stuck in the house to play a tune and then to kind of break it down the way I would normally teach it. So if you haven't tried playing any Scottish music before, you play the violin or if you've not played the violin for a long time. A lot of my students learned at school and then haven't touched it through their adult life and later on they've come back to it. Um, if you've got a violin kicking about the loft or the back of a cupboard and you want to give it a go, just try it. It's top fun. Um, I also find that when you're playing the fiddle or when you're concentrating on what you're doing, it's a brilliant distraction because you really can't think about anything else. So it takes the mind off the old coronavirus for a while. Um, so I'll post a link to the cheap music for the tune as well if you do want to, to read it off the docks. Um, the tune is, it's an old reel, it's a traditional tune. So in, in Scottish music, when tunes are marked as traditional, it means that they're so old they don't know who wrote them. Basically, they would have travelled verbally and um, passed on through word of mouth and probably not transcribed until much, much later on. So we don't really know if they're if they're completely correct as they were originally written, but um, it's kind of nice to, to preserve them and to keep playing them and keep the tradition alive. So the, the tune is called The Night We Had the Goats, and it's a reel, um, and it's a, it's a short reel. It's an eight bar, 50 beats. So I'll play through it a couple of times and then I'll break it down. Okay. That's our tune. Um, it sounds like there's a whole lot more going on than there actually is. So, bar one. So normally I would just, I would kind of break it down into bars at a time. Um, I don't want to run this video on for a long, long time. Um, and I guess you can go backwards and forwards to it. I usually, after each class or each each lesson with my private students, um, I make up a drop, Dropbox video of me playing the tune and any technique stuff that's relevant to the tune. Um, so my students, when they're practicing at home, they can kind of dip dip in backwards and forwards with it. And it really, really helps actually consolidate the tune um, for each of them. So I won't break it down quite as much as I would normally, because I don't want to, to bore you all. Um, so bar one, we're going to start on third finger on the A string, that's your D. We're going to hop that third finger straight over. We don't even need to think about other fingers at this point. It's a three to three. So third finger on the A string to third finger on the D string. From there, we're going to go back to a B. Okay, I keep my first finger on. If, you know, if I can find an easy way to do things, I will always do it. So I keep my first finger on because I'm coming back to it. I'm coming back to that B. B, G, B, D. another couple of times. A wee bit slower. Okay. Next bar, open E. Two opens to then to second finger on your E string to a G. E, E, G. Back 
connect to your third finger on the A string D, D, B, A, B, 3, 1, open 1. Okay, so that bar in its entirety. E, E, G, D, B, A, B. So we'll put those two bars together and we'll play them a couple of times. Once more. Okay, and watch where I'm, I'm tying two notes together, where I'm putting the slurs in, okay? So we're going to separate out. Slur. Slur. If you're finding it tricky, I call it slurring uphill. Um, going from your A string to your D string. Think about what this elbow's doing. I always think about my bow as being an extension of my arm. It's not it's not the bow deciding what it's doing. It's, it's my whole arm. So if I've got any adjustments to make, it comes predominantly from my shoulder, my elbow, from my forearm. It's a much more, I guess, wide-ranging movement than you would imagine moving around strings. So if when you're changing up, you just lift your elbow. Simples. Okay, so next bar, exactly the same as the first bar. Okay, traditional music is, is fairly simple in structure. 99% of tunes follow a question answer format. So you'll have your first phrase as a question. Next phrase, you'll get an answer to that question. Then you'll get the same question again. And then you'll get a final answer. Okay, and that tends to be the format, which means, so that means when you're learning, and especially if you're learning by year, I think you notice that much, much quicker. Um, so once you've learned a couple of bars of a tune, you've learned a big chunk of the tune because it keeps coming round and around the same notes. Okay, so bar three is exactly the same as bar one, which is the, so it's your D, third finger on the A string, third finger straight over to third finger on the D string to your G. First finger on and keep it there. Okay, and then finishes off, last bar, E, G, D, B, A. Okay, so that is the first half of the tune, which we call the A part. So what I'll do is I'll just play that round a couple of times, slowly, okay? Slur, slur, first half okay so right now it kind of just sounds like notes I think there's different things that you can add in to get it, I call it giving it Scottish flavor so we tend to have as fiddlers we have a little box of Scottishness that we just can sprinkle on tunes to make them sound Scottish okay and there's little things you can put in so in that first bar we've got a lot of, of quavers so there's a lot of short notes in that bar but in the in the first bar the the crotch at the whole beat note is a G okay so these are short notes whole whole beat and that feels much much longer so because we've got more time there it means we can do stuff with it okay also it's the root note we're playing in G and this is G so it's a strong note within the tune um so I would I would add something into it. The beauty about traditional music is that you can just change stuff and add things in. So instead of playing, we can just add a little triplet in there. It's not essential, you don't have to. These are all, any, any sort of embellishments or additional things that we put into the tune are completely optional and everybody tends to have the things that they like or that they don't like so much, which is fine. Um, but I would, 
mostly always put three notes in there instead of one. So. Okay? Just three notes. Okay, into the second half of the tune, the B part, we've got two pick up notes. B to D on first finger, third finger on the A string. I would slur them, tie them together so that we're on a down bow for the first beat of the bar. It's a much stronger bow to be on. Um, open E. E, E to G again. We saw those notes in the first half of the tune. D, B, B, D, three, one, one, three on the A string. Okay. Next bar, E again, E, E to G. This time we're going to say, we're going to go up D, E, G. So three, open two. And I'm going to slur in the second and third notes. Slur. Okay, so those two bars together with our little pick up notes at the start. Next bar, highest point we've been in this tune yet, high A, third finger on the E string. Okay, so I'm going to break this bar in half because we've got eight notes in this bar, eight quavers. So we're going to do three, one, two, open on the E string or A, F, G, E. Then D, B, B, D, which we've already seen in the first bar of the second half. So all together that bar, super slowly. A, F, G, E, D, B, B, D. Last bar, exactly the same as the last bar in the A part. E, G. Second half of our tune. our whole tune just like that um, I always ask my students to, to, to sing not necessarily in class because not everybody's really comfortable with that but when they're practicing at home sing the tunes that they're playing and by doing that you kind of naturally phrase the tune in your head where you would take a breath when you're singing is kind of the end of one phrase and the start of the next so when I play tunes I'm constantly singing in my head, it's probably a good thing it's not out loud because I am a terrible singer. <laughs> um, but that really, really helps with the musicality of the, of the tune. Anyway, I'm going to finish up now, but give it a go. If you've not played for a long time, give it a go. Um, yeah. And it'd be interesting for your feedback as well. So feel free to comment, but only say nice things. Stay safe. Bye.